a healthy relationship looks like. This. Stop the cap. <laughs> Stop the cap right now. Stop the cap. Okay, sisters and Zatima fans, this is the big video that I have been wanting to do for the past several weeks, but I figured that it would be best to wait until after we hit the hiatus period for Sisters Season 7. Uh, currently, I don't know exactly when Zatima Season 3 will start, you know, dropping episodes on BET+. Plus. Given that Sisters is returning May 29th to pick up where they left off with Season 7B, I think it is safe to assume that Zatima Season 3 itself should be coming to BET+. Plus. I want to say maybe sometime in either late April or maybe May, since Bruh is dropping on April 11th. So I think Zatima might not come out until a few weeks after that. But in terms of overlap, I don't know how that's going to work. But it wouldn't surprise me if, let's say, Zatima itself starts at the beginning of May. And then the finale, or the last two episodes before the mid-season finale, comes on um, the same week that Sisters Returns. Just a theory. But in any case, the million dollar question is, how toxic is Zach and Fatima's relationship? Oh boy, this is a loaded question. Due to the fact that Zatima as a pairing is so popular that if you say anything negative about him, it's going to lead to some issues. Now, this video is, I don't want to say an entire history of Zach and Fatima's relationship, because I would be here for probably five plus hours. I'm really going to highlight some of the good, unfortunately, a lot of the bad, and just kind of determine if they are a toxic pairing. Now, the general definition of a toxic relationship is a relationship that makes you feel unsupported, misunderstood, demeaned, or attacked. Also, a relationship that in some way threatens your well-being as well as your emotional, psychological, and physical self. Basically, you know, if you're in a relationship that really isn't doing much good for you. Basically, when the bad outweighs the good. I do feel like toxic is a word that's thrown around a bit too much in our current society. Same thing with the word triggered, you know? So, I use the term toxic very loosely. Even though I will be using it a lot in this video. But... In light of this, in, you know, the research process, because remember, I've reviewed every single episode of Sisters and Zatima. And if I remember correctly, Sisters should be around episode 140 plus. Then if you add in the 30 episodes of Zatima, I've almost watched and reviewed close to 200 episodes so far, which is crazy when you think about it. And Zach and Fatima didn't even encounter each other for the first time until, you know, the early episodes of season two. And going back through so many episodes, mainly scenes of Zach and Fatima during seasons two through four, I gotta admit, I had forgotten how much in love these two were when they first started, you know, interacting with each other. It was crazy. And it really just took me back down memory lane by seeing how these two quickly became the it couple of the show. Now, at first, um, Danny and Preston were that couple, you know, in late season one and for a bulk of season two. The, they were the um, Sean and Angela, of Boy Meets World, if you will. And Zach and Fatima became the Corey and Topanga. But sadly, it got to the point where, for whatever reason, Tyler decided to write it where Danny would self-sabotage the relationship with Preston and it almost felt like that couple had to be sacrificed in order to uplift Zach and Fatima's dynamic like you know oh we can't have two you know healthy relationships uh in this uh show which is interesting because you know sisters could have had a very very strong interracial relationship as well as a strong black couple 
that had issues along the way, but they were working through them. But no, it had to be Zach and Fatima or Danny and Preston. And well, we know what couple won the uh, race. Now, I don't know for a fact if that's exactly what happened in terms of the, you know, Tyler's decision making when writing the scripts. I just think from my perspective, that's how it went. And several other fans feel the same way where it felt like, you know, uh, one couple can only survive. Like if you uh, watch CW's The Flash when that used to air, you had Iris and Barry who were the quote unquote it couple. But at the same time, there were so many other couples in the show that were better than Barry and Iris. Even worse, Barry had more chemistry with numerous other female characters than he did with Iris. But that's, you know, another topic for another day. Um, but yeah, you could say what you want to. And I remember saying this around the beginning of season three, halfway through season three. I don't think sisters would be where it is today without Zach and Fatima. I do not think sisters would be where it is today without Zach and Fatima as a couple. Because season one, it felt like the Andy show. Season two, it felt like some of the other characters were getting more screen time and I don't I, I use the term development loosely because of the fact that um, I remember the season two finale was the first time I noticed that, oh, wow, we're Tyler is going to reset these characters because at the beginning of season three. I'm like everything that they did in season two, any sort of potential development or change is going to be thrown out of the window to recycle storylines. So basically. Season two was when I opened my eyes to, oh, it's going to be that kind of show, huh? But then when we get to season three, it it felt more like. It felt like Zatima before Zatima was a thing, if that makes any sense. It's like New Edition when um, Bobby left already or got kicked out. Ralph didn't want to perform at one event. And it was um, Ronnie, Ricky, and Mike. And they had to perform by themselves for the first time. Hey, they're a lonely girl. And it felt like we saw the beginning stages of bbd before it was a thing or heck even if you go back to the can you stand the rain music video where you got johnny on one side ralph on the other out in front uh you know doing their solo bits and then in the background you got the other three harmonizing which again was kind of like we got this group but at the same time you could see the different uh factions within it two solo artists and then the group in the back and i felt like that zach and fatima where they kind of stood out together like you know ralph and Johnny while the rest of the sisters cast was in the back. So it felt like Tyler was crafting the show around them while the other main characters just sadly kind of fell to the wayside because they just kept getting stuck in the same repetitive rut. And it's funny because the team all happened by kind of an accident because I remember in the interview, um, DeVal stated that, you know, he and Crystal were in like a room I forgot if it was like um, the bedroom on uh, on set, like they were in that room practicing their lines for the scene they had to do. Tyler walked by, looked at him, said, you know what? I see something right there. And then he kind of walked off and then, hey, well, the rest is history. Tyler was right. Now, say what you want about the man's writing. Say what you want about, you know, the way he uh, utilizes some characters great and others poorly, but. He was right. When he sees potential in something or someone, he is more than likely on the mark. And he saw what Zatima could become during the first rehearsal stages of Deval and Crystal and the work they put into the characters. So when you look at the show in season four, five and beyond, I mean, like I said before, I don't think sisters would be the hit smash, the smash that it is now without Zach and Fatima. I mean, they got a spinoff for a reason. And also, season one was 10 episodes. Originally, originally, Zatima was only supposed to get one mini season, 10 episodes. But the fact that it blew up on BET Plus and just streaming platforms in general, BET demanded more. That's why we got a season two, which was double the episodes. That's why we're getting a season three, which is also 20 episodes. Now, this video is going to be broken up into different sections. I felt like it was important to really start off the video 
kind of going back over the popularity of Zatima. I've said it time and time again around seasons three through five. To me personally, I think Fatima was like the Urkel of sisters. Was only supposed to be in here for, you know, a little small minor role. But the popularity of the character resonated with fans. And then when combined with Zack, it just blew up to a new level. And kind of like, you know, how Family Matters quickly became Steve Urkel. Like, hey, did you watch Urkel last night? Oh, man, yeah. Nobody really said Family Matters. It became the Steve Urkel show. That's what it felt like with Zack and Fatima. Like, they quickly overshadowed the rest of the sisters cast due to the fact that, and this is coming from a person who critically analyzes each and every episode, but you could tell where Tyler was focusing most of the quality writing, whereas the other characters were just put in the same repetitive rut. Now, don't get me wrong. As we'll get deeper into the video, Zach and Fatima kind of fell into the same trap as well, where too much of a good thing is sadly too much of a good thing. That's mainly reserved for Sister Season 5, but I gotta say, Zack and Fatima's popularity has quickly catapulted them to arguably the best Tyler Perry couple of all time, or at the very least, the most popular. I mean, as, you know, great as CJ and Janine were in terms of their journey, or Will and Sasha from Meet the Browns, um, Curtis... Well, no, no, that's a bad example. I was going to say Curtis and Ellie because my whole thing was I was going to list out a bunch of different Tyler Perry couples, but how many of them actually got a spinoff? Technically, Curtis and Ella did with the pains, even though it sucked, they still got a spinoff. But when you look at Zach and Fatima as a whole, I think you'll find that there are a number of reasons why these two shouldn't be together. But at the end of the day, they love each other so much, they decide to stay together no matter what. Now, the honeymoon phase definitely was what drew fans to this pairing. But I feel like we can all agree that in some respects, they just moved way too fast. And kind of to counter that, they just dealt with way too much stuff at once. So it just makes you wonder... Okay, at what point does Zach say, I want to leave? Or what point does Fatima say, I got to leave? Well, what we're going to do here. Oh, man. I went over to Google, you know, good old Google. And then I typed in, you know, toxic relationship traits. And when you do that, at least in my search engine, you'll see traits of a toxic relationship. And before you scroll down to see any article links, It'll have like, you know, a rectangle or three rows with eight different categories with about 24 different traits of a toxic relationship. And if you hit the arrow, there'll be a drop down box that goes over, you know, oh, hostility, being neglected, gaslighting, basically giving you detailed information on each trait. And all of these have different various articles slash sources. So let me just make it clear. I want to go through most of these 24 items and give examples from the series of Zach and Fatima's dynamic and whether or not they fit the bill of a toxic relationship. Keep in mind, there are far more than 24 different traits of a toxic relationship. Zach and Fatima have gone through a lot. And I'm not going to sit here and list off every example of when they had a lack of trust or every example where they uh, disrespected each other. I'm really going to highlight the main issues that these two have had during their run so far. Because like I said, I don't want to be up here five hours. You don't want to hear me for five hours. Some people do because they like my voice. But at the same time, I just wanted to make this an in-depth video because the reason I wanted to do this video in a long form format is because if you're on the channel, you, you know how I usually do things by episode reviews, trailer breakdowns, discussions, uh, weekly live streams, and you know, other talking points outside of shorts, which are a minute or less. Um, my videos usually range between five to 15 minutes, give or take, depending on if it's an episode review, those tend to run long because they're episode reviews. So I figured that a long form video where I'm not pressed to do like 20, 30 plus videos a week because I got so much to do within seven days. I felt like I could take my time on this one, really do some research. And unfortunately, you know, 
I didn't want to run run the risk of getting a copyright claim. So I'm not going to use a bunch of clips in this video, which I wanted to do. But like I said, I don't want to risk it because, you know, I would hate to do so much work in this one video. And then even though I do my best to follow uh, copyright fair use policy rules, I didn't want to gamble it. Not to mention, maybe I'll upload this audio to Spotify or something. And, you know, that way you can just listen to me talk there. I don't know. But I will reference the episodes as best I can. Like, you know, the episode number, what season, this, that, and the third. So, whew, this is a lot. Before diving deep into this, please take a moment to hit the thumbs up button to show you like the video. Because guess what? If this video gets around, let's say, 3,000 likes, and this video does well in terms of views, I will probably do another video in this same style. But this time, I'll talk about Zach and Karen and how toxic their relationship was and especially the aftermath after they had already broken up. Also hit subscribe because I really want to hit 300,000 subscribers soon. Follow me on social media. All those links are in the description box below and hit the bell icon and select all. That way you don't miss out whenever I post content on the channel. I would say um, the toxicity in Zach and Fasima's relationship. Look, Zach. I love you. Oh my God, what did I do now? You start with you love me, I with you leaving. I feel like our community has normalized toxic love. So yeah, you'll recognize that clip. I used it a few weeks ago. That was kind of like the prelude to this video. I said, hey, Crystal said in an interview that yes, Zach and Fatima have a toxic relationship or more specifically a toxic love and a relationship with some toxic traits. And that's really what this video is about, kind of determining you know, hey, is their relationship toxic or do they have a solid or just great relationship that has some toxic tendencies in it? Now, in terms of TV, it's funny because when you look at certain shows with adult eyes through adult eyes, you see that some of your favorite couples growing up, whether it be sitcom, animated movies, whatever, some of these couples were toxic, but you just didn't know it at the time because more often than not, it was just so, you know, dang entertaining, for example. And I'm pulling from shows and movies that I watched growing up. So in case you didn't, you know, see any couples in my list here, feel free to let me know in the comments some of the toxic TV couples that you grew up watching or maybe recently you watched and it's like, yeah, these two, they're like the main titular couple of the show, but they don't belong together. I put like um, Ali and Noah from The Notebook from DC Comics, uh, Joker and Harley Quinn from Empire. I feel like a lot of people should know Cookie and Lucius um, from Living Single, Max and Kyle. Arguably the couple that Zach and Fatima most likely resemble in today's era from the 90s. You got Martin and Gina. And then some fun examples from shows I definitely watched growing up. Corey and Topanga from Boy Meets World is crazy when you look back. Yeah, these two really, oh, I don't know if they were the, you know, star couple that the 90s portrayed them to be. Um, Miss Piggy and Kermit from The Muppets. And yikes, even though we had the recent Quiet On Set documentary from Victorious, we got Beck and Jade. So there are a number of couples where either one or both party were toxic in their own way. And despite the unhealthy nature of the relationships more often than not we rooted for them but in other cases like you know why does this girl just dump this dude or why does this guy leave this girl who's definitely not feeling him the way that he's feeling her or you know both and either one of them has a wandering eye or whatever so it's crazy to me that zach and fatima in a lot of ways could be added to this list but i think another point that people need to remember is that DeVal said this many times in various interviews that Zach and Fatima do not, they do not have a fairy tale love or, you know, perfect relationship. It was never meant to be portrayed that way on screen or in the script. They were supposed to be real. They were supposed to be raw. People are actually seeing for the first time on television the realness behind a relationship. Mm -hmm. You got the DNA from the baby. What the hell you think I was doing over there? That's... Mm -hmm. 
There's no fairy tale with Zach and Fatima. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you get life. You get levity, which is the funny mm -hmm. part. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, they see the love. Okay, so as I mentioned before, I'm going to be pulling from a list of about 24 different traits of a toxic relationship. And we're going to be like, yay or nay, as to whether or not Zach and Fatima fall into the category of, you know, uh, some of these traits here. With the first one being gaslighting, which is the most common form of manipulation in any sort of relationship, whether it be a family connection, friendship, relationship where, you know, one causes the other to question their own experiences or reality or sanity. I, I'm going to go out on a limb here. I don't really see that much gaslighting from Zach and Fatima. Keep in mind, um, I'm a male, single, no girlfriend, no fiance, no wife, and no kids either. So keep in mind that my perspective may be different from yours there could be those out there watching this video listening to my voice who you know watch sisters and Zatima and it's like Jeremy what are you talking about there are plenty of examples of Zach and Fatima gaslighting each other feel free to let me know in the comments because like I said I'm only one person I'm only human I can't speak for everybody's experiences so just keep that in mind so if any of these traits I'm like I don't think they exhibit this trait but you feel like they do Hey, that's, that's fine. The comment section is there for a reason. That way we can have the discussion. Honestly, I can't wait to post this video, give it some time to, you know, build some uh, traction online, hopefully start some good discussions and uh, we'll go from there. So again, gaslighting, I don't think that they fall into this category. So that's going to be a thumbs down for me. Uh, next up, we have, oh boy. I mean, let me put it this way. If, if I had to pick one of these 24 things that I would put above the rest, it would be hostile communication. These two, like I said, going back through the seasons two, three, and four sisters, it was great. I mean, were Zach and Fatima perfect? No, but they had moments where they would clash but more often than not, it was due to their own lack of communication. But they always had moments where, let's say, Fatima was pulling back, but Zach would be like, no, 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 no. Look me in the eye. We're going to talk about how you're feeling. What's going on? And then sometimes the same would be done with uh, Fatima, you know, to Zach. And then they would always come to a moment where it's like, OK, they drop their attitude. They drop their walls and they basically have a moment when they're real with each other. And there are so many examples of this, like, you know, when uh, da, 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 Fatima says something to the effect of, I'm afraid because I'm falling deeper in love with you. And I remember the first time she said that fans were eating it up. And then Zach, sometimes, you know, he would have those moments where he would yell or just, you know, lie to Fatima. And I mean, this leads into another trait I'll talk about later. But as we learn in Zatima, he addresses in therapy his self-destructive tendencies because, you know, there are times where he, uh, what was it, when Hayden um, recorded some of Fatima's phone calls at work and Fatima, well, even though she was a nameless character at the time, I believe Angela, well, maybe she did drop her name, Angela, I forgot, but basically after finding out Hayden was tapping into her phone calls at work, Fatima called her girl to, you know, create a scenario to let Hayden hear, you know, what she was saying on purpose. And then Hayden took the call, chopped it up, sent the voicemail to Zach, basically letting him hear what he wanted him to hear. Zach thought that, oh, wow, she's playing me. So then he lied about getting back together with Karen. And then she already had his bags packed at the door. But then things, you know, worked themselves out and they were able to reconcile. But yeah, when it comes to the yelling, especially starting with season five, both are guilty of this, but I will say Fatima is usually the one to initiate it. Oh, yeah. Also, I needed to point this out before I got deep into the video. As you all know, I don't always have the most popular opinions. I mean, more often than not, I do have pretty solid opinions that the fan base sees my perspective on. But you have the Fatima fans or the Fatima fanatics. And then you got the Karen stands and I'm not always going to give an opinion or even when I have it backed up by facts by the shows 
that everybody's going to like. So what I want you to know, this video is not a shit piece on Fatima or because, oh, I'm a guy, so I'm going to be biased. I'm not going to talk about Zach's flaws. I'm only going to focus on Fatima. Let me just kind of give you a spoiler alert. I feel like most of these traits are exhibited by Fatima than Zach. While I let me put it this way, while Fatima has a larger quantity of these toxic traits, Zach has a larger quality. What I mean by that is, let's say Fatima exhibits 18 of these traits, but then Zach only exhibits like seven, but his seven are way bigger than Fatima's in some respects. For example, uh, let's put the toxicity aside, but let's look at the baggage from their relationships. Fatima doesn't come into this with any, ex, you know, surprise babies versus Zach who does. I mean, heck, that one example alone is a prime example of, yeah, you know what? Fatima has some baggage, but I mean, you got Zach who has a whole airport full, pun intended, because he used to work at the airport. So there we go. But yeah, the hostile communication, I feel like this is the worst part of their relationship. They used to be so good at their communication. It wasn't perfect, but they would always, you know, have the moments where they would calm down. Um, the one who was kind of in their feelings got pulled in by their significant other to drop their guard, discuss what was really going on, and they were able to pull through. However, it got to the point where Tyler just for whatever reason decided to have Fatima enter the I need to process things stage, which I feel like was one of the biggest mistakes he ever made, which, oh man, is a reflection of season five in general. Season five was my least favorite season of Fatima in the series. I don't know what Tyler did, but he just really started to just push the narrative of her being like, you know, a gangster and whatnot. And the loving, caring Fatima was just gone. I mean, she was barely there. I remember she was there at like the beginning of the season, but then she kind of disappeared until around the halfway point. But then, you know, it was just, oh man, it was really messed up. But yeah, the hostile communication, there's a lot of yelling. And typically Fatima's the one who yells, but then Fatima's the kind of, Zach is the kind of person where his emotions, when he's happy and excited, oh, he is just, exuberant with that energy but when he's sad and depressed he's really down deep in the hole like he's just you know core, uh, you know center of the earth in his feelings about something it's kind of interesting because while zach is the one who's like overly emotional fatima's the one who's overly reserved when she gets mad she just builds the walls when Zach gets mad, he just closes himself off in general. Not necessarily walls. He's more like, I'll push you away by self-sabotaging and then, you know, go about my business. Whereas Fatima is like, you know, again, she builds these walls. And I mean, another trait is walking, but we'll get to that a little later. So yeah, hostile communication, definitely top of the list here. Um, this one, oh man. Lack of communication. I, I don't have much to say here because I feel like this is, uh, it goes hand in hand with the hostile communication. And I think lack of communication, I put this on Fatima. Zach also has several examples as well, but Fatima, I feel like is the worst offender of this where she will talk to, like I said before, there were times when she wouldn't say what was wrong. Zach would immediately pick up on this and say, hey, 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 let's slow down. Tell me what's wrong. She would express it and then they would kiss or whatever and embrace because it's like, hey, thank you for being open with me. Now we know what the problem is. Oh, I did this. I apologize. Or you're afraid of falling for me too fast. Okay. I don't want to say slow it down because that's another thing. They speed ran their relationship. But Zach, sometimes instead of talking to Fatima up front, he will lie. Like, you know, if he thinks Fatima's playing him, basically, if he feels like he's in a repeat of previous relationship, he won't say anything. He'll just be closed off. Other times, well, Zach doesn't really that 
he doesn't all that often run to other people about his issues with his relationship. Not all that often. But yeah, lack of communication. I don't know. Heck, I could do a whole, the video itself could have just been about communication. That's the main thing, the main issue of these two. Yeah, believe it or not, I feel like their communication is an even worse issue than scorned exes like Karen or Hayden or even baby mama drama from Zach's side. I think the lack of communication, the hostile communication or the communication with everyone but their partner is the main issue. Like Fatima running to talk to Angela or Andy or any of the other girls as opposed to her man like she used to do. Which invites outside negativity, which I feel is one of the major factors of why their relationship eventually got to the point where there were just so many issues. Next up, physical abuse. Now, like it or not, Fatima's the guilty party here. From my recollection, Zach has never, and I mean never, put his hands on Fatima. He's broken shit, his own stuff in his own house. But he has never physically abused Fatima. She has shoved him in the face. She slapped him in the face. If I remember in Zatima after he said, I love her about Connie. But Zach has never physically hurt or touched or hit Fatima with the intent of harm. This is Fatima. Yeah, it is her. Okay. Um, criticism. I, I, I don't know. I don't really know if I would label criticism as one of the toxic traits of this relationship. There are moments where they explode at each other, but I don't think that they ever have too many examples of hitting below the belt. I mean, Fatima usually does this, but that's when she going back to lack of communication she kind of bottles up her feelings and doesn't really express them to Zach like she used to. And then instead of healthy in a healthy fashion going through her emotions, she just unloads a clip on Zach and, you know, she's fed up this down the third. But yeah, I don't know. I don't think I would add criticism to the major list of toxic traits here. OK, feeling unsupported. Now, I feel like Zach is definitely guilty of this now. In terms of feeling unsupported, I feel like Fatima experiences this more than Zach. Zach definitely dealt with this during his relationship with Karen. But saying Fatima is unsupportive is one of the gravest mistakes I could ever make in my six plus years of doing commentary on these shows. This woman has gone above and beyond the call of duty of any regular sane woman in terms of what she would put up with. I mean, there are so many examples. I mean, this dude had nothing but the clothes on his back and a bicycle that Fatima hit with her car when they first met. And she built him up daily with affirmations of love and affection. And if you put all that aside, just look at the season six of sisters, the three month time skip to where we are now in the uh, sister season seven. Fatima has definitely supported Zach all throughout the uh, process of getting custody of Michael. Now, like I said before, I don't need to spend a lot of time on this, but Fatima is the queen of supporting her man. Now, on the other hand, I feel like Zach being guilty of unsupport is not being supportive to Fatima. Yes, he is. But it goes back to what I said about the guy being very locked into his emotions like when he's really happy he's happy nothing else matters you know he's excited he wants everybody else to be excited but recently we saw what happened like you know when it comes to like karen being pregnant with twins or you know getting custody of his son it's like all this is what matters while kind of neglecting fatima because of the fact that he's so laser focused what's that saying you know you get the uh carriage before the horses or something like that so basically he kind of jumps the gun and doesn't always consider Fatima's feelings, even though he's like, well, but didn't you tell me to be play nice with Karen and whatnot? And this is something I really want to get into later. But I think, Zach, you play in your girl's face a bit too much under the guise of but Fatima told me to. Deval and I have spoken about this several times. And if you go back to the interview I did with him in Twitter spaces back in July of last year, 
this is a point that he brings up uh, to me and when he's talking with other fans. It's just the fact that there are moments where I don't think he does it out of spite or malice or intention. It's just that when Zach is has his mind or emotions set on something, he has those like blinders on like a racehorse, but he doesn't acknowledge what everybody around him, specifically Fatima, is feeling about this or that. You know, like, oh, I got custody of Michael, who's going to stay at home and like cook and clean and this what, but it's like Fatima has a job, Fatima wants to go to school. But then when he takes a moment, when sometimes like when, when Fatima has to pull him back into reality from his headspace, that's when he's like, oh, my bad, let's work through this. So yeah, while he's guilty of this, he does have the moments where he's brought back down to earth and, you know, he realizes what he did. Okay, next trait, wanting your partner to feel guilty. Nah, I don't really think this is a main issue with these two. I mean, wanting your partner to feel guilty about something. Sometimes, yeah, but I feel like I'll be pulling a Mr. Fantastic and reaching for examples here. I mean, how about the moment where Fatima saw that photo of Zach and Karen hugging at the salon. It looked like they were kissing. And instead of talking to Zach about it at all, the entire day, she was in the car outside the house saying, he got 10 seconds to tell me about it. As soon as I walked to the door, I'm going to go off. And it's like, so you want him to feel guilty or what? I don't know. But yeah, I'll, I'll just scrap this one. I don't think this really applies to these two. Um, next up, we have behavior. I mean, this is a loaded topic. I mean, I feel like behavior in itself, I don't think they really exhibit toxic behavior. They just have normal spats like couples. So I don't really feel like this one applies. Um, next up, holding the relationship hostage. I feel like Fatima kind of does this whenever she threatens to pack her stuff up and leave. Not to mention, how many times has she removed her ring? At least twice? I think she threw it at him at the start of Zatima Season 2. I think she took it off. Oh, yeah, she's taken it off a number of times. Um, Like, I think Andy noticed at one point. Yeah, sometimes she takes it off without even telling Zach. Like, they'll have a fight about something. She'll storm out. And the next scene, she doesn't have the ring on. So... Yeah, I feel like holding the relationships hostage is something that Fatima is more guilty of than Zach. Um, dishonesty, yeah, the Ian factor. Zatim oh, yeah, also, I, I'm not even going to get into the whole, oh, is Zatima and sisters in the same universe discussion? That's no, that's not, that's irrelevant to this uh, uh, video. I'm just going to be pulling examples from both shows here. But I think the dishonesty falls into both camps. Like for example, Zach not being upfront about Tony when she was trying to blackmail him, have sex with me. I want to tell the feds about the stock tip and you'll get arrested. Um, but you know, it wasn't until Fatima overheard Zach talking with Jake about it, that she learned about what was happening. But then you have Zatima season one, where she met with Ian at the coffee shop after work and didn't tell Zach about it. Zach, I think, um, didn't Fatima call Zach over the phone about coming home late or did Zach call Fatima and he could just tell by her voice that something was wrong, but she said she was fine. And then when Tony showed him the picture, Zach was getting ready for a night out with the boys and talk with Fatima was like, did anything interesting happen after work? And then Fatima didn't say anything, but then he was able to drag it out of her. So yeah, these two are both guilty of being dishonest with each other, but I don't think it's a major recurring trait of their relationship, which on the one hand is good. Um, another trait, feeling drained. Yes. <laughs> I think this is mainly on Fatima's side, which again, not is a, not, it's not a negative not towards her. It's just that all of the random surprises and baggage that Zach has, it can be draining. Even as a fan, I feel drained. I'm like, Lord, what now? Tyler, what are you doing now? It's like another kid. Oh, another um, run in with the police. Oh, another scorned ex who disrespects Fatima. And Lord, let's not even get into the family drama that comes from 
being with Zach from Jeremiah to Gladys. Just, yeah, I feel like um, both parties wind up being drained, especially emotionally with the other person. But I think Fatima is the one who definitely suffers from this the most uh, due to the fact that it's like she feels like she's being boxed in sometimes where, you know, she was a strong, independent woman who was getting her education. She was working her job. But it quickly got to the point where all of a sudden she's a stepmom full time. It's not like it was joint custody between Heather and Zach. I mean, I remember Fatima's reaction to Zach wanting full custody of his son as opposed to, oh, I thought you were just going to do like joint custody or something. Or why don't you give Heather money or, you know, try to help her get on her feet so she gets a more, I guess you could say, reputable, safe job as opposed to a exotic dancer you know, and put her up somewhere nice instead of that, you know, neighborhood she was in. But, um, yeah, I could definitely feel Fatima suffering from this more than Zach in their relationship. Okay. Next up, they strip away your self-esteem. No, this is definitely a Zach Karen thing, not a Fatima and uh, Zach thing. Next up, lack of trust. I, Okay. Remember what I said before about how sometimes Fatima has more of a quantity of these examples and Zach, but whenever Zach has it, it's just like huge in terms of comparison. On the one hand, I definitely put Fatima in the top spot of being less trusting of her partner than Zach is. But Zach, the way he went off in Zatima season two, when he saw Paul and Fatima on the elevator, that was just a lot. Remember what I said before, when the dude is happy, he's really happy. When he's sad, he's really sad. But when he's upset, oh, he is just completely over the top insane. One, you have one before I fuck him up. Why? 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 What you mean, why? 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 What do you mean? Because yeah, I told you I wasn't doing anything. You went and hooked up with Bob the fucking builder? And you're asking me why? Are you kidding me? You're not listening to me. I'm listening. No, you're not. What? Why? You're not why? hearing me. I'm here. I heard everything you said. OK, then what I did heard... I say? Tell, tell me what I said. Yeah. It don't even matter what you said. It don't. Zach. It don't. I said that we were stuck, OK? That's it. I heard I you. Stumbled... I mean, the way he just exploded, not wanting to hear out Fatima. Now, keep in mind, he spotted Paul as a creeper on his relationship from the jump. Uh, the fact that he just didn't hear Fatima at all was a lot. It's like, OK, I get it. This is definitely supposed to harken back to Martin and his toxic masculinity and territorial nature of Gina. But Zach, come on, you know better than this, man. And Fatima, on the other hand, I feel like what makes her worse, hang, look, like I said, Zach, he has huge examples of not trusting Fatima, but that more so is in line with uh, his character in terms of being a bit jealous. But at the same time, Fatima is guilty of this in terms of, again, Sister Season 5, when she says, Oh, I love Zach. I trust him and whatnot. But then it's like, hey, it, it, this is one of the examples where Zach does do what Fatima says. Like, you know what, Zach, I trust you. You go over there and handle your business with Karen by yourself. But then the second Zach walks out the door or if somebody shows Fatima something or tells her something, all of that love and trust just flies the freak out of the window and she is automatically pissed angela showing her the photo from the salon um you know or seeing zach and karen like happy and smiling together in a compromising position 
yeah, sometimes it's warranted. Other times it's not. So yeah, I definitely think that lack of trust goes from both parties, but more often than not, it's Fatima who's less trusting, but at the same time, like I said before, Zach does have a bit of a tendency to play in her face or Fatima just comes in at the wrong moment, kind of like with Zach in the elevator. Um, Next trait, ignoring the other person's needs. I feel like this goes into the feeling unsupported category again. Zach... I mean, I remember season six of Sisters, Zach and Fatima didn't play that big of a role. And I said, you know what? Less is more. They were overexposed in season five. Tyler had them at the forefront. But the more screen time they got, the more unnecessary drama they had, and the more they were at each other's throats, mainly Fatima towards Zach. And then in season six, it became more about them and their journey to get custody of Michael. And one of my pet peeves of the season, like, Yo, every time Zach is on screen, he's asking Fatima the same thing. Are you good? I just want to make sure you're comfortable. So I don't feel like there are too many examples of Zach ignoring Fatima's needs. But when he does ignore her needs, there are pretty big scenarios. Again, not checking in with her about his plans to get full custody. It's kind of like sometimes Zach does these things and he just assumes Fatima's going to be cool with it without checking in with her. Fatima, on the other hand, I feel like it's a more of an, an emotional thing. And I, I know that season two of Zatima, Zach was upset about the lack of sex because, you know, you go, come on, we would do it on the, on the, um, you know, the, the, on top of the refrigerator, we're doing, you know, on the coffee table. But Fatima's like, look, I'm worn out, baby. But I don't feel like that's one of the examples I want to use. I want to talk about more so in the category of um, Zach's needs to communicate. Because Fatima, when she wants to talk about something, it has to be discussed right there on the spot, even if Zach isn't ready to discuss it. Or even if he doesn't even know what happened. Like, what did I do? I don't know what I did. That's a problem. Uh, and then he has to apologize profusely to get her to talk to him. And then when he wants to talk about something, she needs to disappear and process it. And usually she doesn't even apologize when she's wrong. So I do feel like both parties are guilty of this. Disrespect, I, both parties. Like I said, Zach, sometimes when he plays in her face and Fatima, when, um, you know, she like puts hands on him and, you know, just talks down to him sometimes. But yeah, I feel like disrespect isn't a major issue, but both parties are guilty of it. Uh, okay, this is, uh, let me see if I can get this right. Autonomy disbalance. Basically, it's one of those situations where one is in fear of the other one leaving. They basically let their fear from past experiences provide a negative, you know, impact on their relationship. Now, Fatima, I feel like her issues with Ian she projects those onto Zach sometimes. And then with Zach, I don't think it's necessarily his fear of Fatima leaving. It's his own fear of not being a provider. Basically, he's afraid of reverting back to the old Zach that was with Karen, the one who wasn't able to provide. He had to rely on a woman to take care of him. He wasn't, you know, a, a loyal guy, things like that. So I definitely feel like um, both parties are guilty of this but they come from places of hurt, which is understandable. Okay, we only got eight more, but there are a couple more I want to add on from a new list I found while searching, but I'll, I'll utilize those couple of traits as I wrap up the video. Okay, um, blaming and shaming. I, season two, Dr. Reed, Fatima said this uh, line that forever had me going, wow, Tyler, you're really doing this? Because you don't have any issues. No, I mean, I just feel like if we get him together, we'll be okay. I see. I, I don't have a problem telling you, Doc. It's all him. It's all him. Yes. Yeah, it's the fact that Fatima just all of a sudden forgot what the term accountability meant. And that all the issues from their relationship come from Zach's end of the, uh, you know the end of the boat, not hers. And that just struck me 
the it, it just made me look at Fatimo for side eye like you're not going to recognize your own issues and the times you blew up at Zach or threats to like tear up the gym if he didn't let you go it, it it's all him it, he's the reason everything is wrong in the relationship really Fatima okay sure well yeah Fatima's definitely guilty of this um are there Zach examples feel free to let me know in the comments I mean again I'm not trying to be biased it's just that sometimes Fatima's examples definitely um <laughs> definitely overshadow anything of Zach's depression I feel like Zach gets depression but I feel like we learn more about this in the team that's why I'm glad that team season two was a thing I need to ask about well I don't know if he'll know this answer but if we didn't get as a team of two and we only got the team of season one will we have delve dive deep into Zach's childhood traumas and his therapy journey I wonder because I feel like his own depression stems from, you know, his um, upbringing, his previous relationship. And I, I I feel like, you know, I don't feel like this is toxic. This is a natural thing. And I'm just glad that in today's time, mental health and therapy is becoming more of a um, thing within the black community as opposed to being shunned or, you know, ridiculed. So, yeah, they both go through this, you know, Fatima of her own. Uh, past relationship trauma jealousy enough said both parties <laughs> how many times has Fatima threatened to rough up somebody Deja Karen but she's pregnant so she gets a pass but like I said you look at how Zach blew up on Paul but then what was it that uh I forgot the attorney's name but in season six of sisters the one attorney that was helping Fatima with Zach's you know custody battle and you know Zach was looking like, what y'all smiling at each other for? What's going on? You know, like he's a bit territorial as well. Both parties are guilty of this. Manipulation. Mm, I don't think there's necessarily manipulation. I do feel like sometimes Zach, he does push a bit too much. What I mean by that is, I don't want to say manipulate. I don't feel like manipulate is the correct term, but he looks at his status now of being a provider. I feel like sometimes he tries to overcompensate because he wasn't able to be that provider in his previous relationship with Karen. So he tries to overcompensate in his relationship with Fatima. Like, come on, move in with me. Come on, you know, I'm on one knee. Let's get married. And, you know, let's get married right now. So I feel like, you know, he's not holding the relationship hostage, as I mentioned in another trait, but... Yeah, I don't I don't think manipulation is the correct trait to add to the list of Zach and Fatima issues. Uh competitiveness and jealousy, no. I don't feel like there's ever like, you know, Fatima is hating on Zach's money in the stocks or Zach hating on Fatima's, you know, um growing law career. No, I don't think this qualifies at all. Emotional abuse um Sometimes when they are hostile with each other, communication wise, you know, like Zach lying about having sex with Connie or lying about getting together with Karen again or Fatima just, um, you know, sometimes hitting below the belt in terms sometimes about his uh, drama in terms of the Karen and, you know, Heather stuff. But I don't think it's a major detriment to the relationship. No. Uh, the atmosphere, this, I feel like, I feel like there's more of a toxic atmosphere outside of the Zach and Fatima household. This stems from their friends, Zach's family, baby mamas. Yeah, it, it there is definitely a, to a toxic atmosphere in their relationship but mainly due to outside forces, the people they hang out with, um, you know, people from their past. So, yeah, this is definitely a major factor in their toxic, the toxic elements of their relationship. OK, I think this is the last one on the list here. Um, We got walking and I really do. Feel, OK, the definition is. 
Hmm. The definition is more so walking on eggshells when you feel like you can't confront your partner or discuss uncomfortable topics because you're afraid of them lashing out. Um, I think Zach exhibits this due to Fatima always saying I got to process things or I want to blow up. So there's that. But when I look at walking, I'm looking more so at Fatima, who's always walking away. But that's it for the main list. Now, there's another point I wanted to bring up where it says uh, set boundaries, which I feel like Zach is guilty of this. He's rushing things, even though Fatima at times sets boundaries. Zach doesn't respect him. It's like, look, I want you to move in with me. Yeah, I think we're moving a bit too fast. How about... I move some of my stuff in here, but I keep my old apartment because I think it goes hand in hand with what I said towards the beginning of the video. Zach and Fatima deal with a lot of crap. I mean, the stuff they deal with just in a seemingly endless just cycle of, okay, dang, I got to deal with this baby mama crap. Man, come on. What's this with the child support? Wait, am I getting sued? Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Fatima, did you shoot at somebody? It's just one thing after another. And I feel like because they speed ran their relationship, there's also a speed run of the issues they deal with. There's barely a moment to breathe because Zach and Fatima used to have a point where they would only appear on screen together uh, every so often. It wasn't every episode where they would be on screen together. And I'm talking like prior to when they moved in together at Zach's place. Um, they would talk on the phone. And I remember there were times where we would like have to suffer through a sister's episode just to get two or three minutes of Zach and Fatima interaction. People would say like, man, this episode was boring, but I only stuck in there so I could see Zach and Fatima talking. It's like, you know, they would maybe they would both go through something during the day, but then that phone call is what, you know, brighten up their mood or we'd see them having dinner or something like that. And that just made the whole episode, which is, again, goes back to the point where I feel like Zatima saved the series because people would only tune in to see these two. They didn't care about Andy chasing after Gary's toxic behind, or we, we didn't care about Karen being bitter or Danny self-sabotaging her relationship with uh, Preston or Sabrina dealing with Panty Man Calvin. We wanted to see Zach and Fatima. But yeah, the boundaries, I feel like get overstepped because Zach wants to prove to Fatima that he's a good man, a better man than he was with Karen, but he doesn't need to do that with her. He feels like he needs to do it. Again, makes sense from his upbringing and what we learn about him in therapy. But I feel like, you know, him not always respecting Fatima's boundaries does lead to some hostility from time to time. Okay. Um, wow. So <laughs> th this was a lot. We went through 24 different well, 25 different steps of or traits of a toxic relationship. So at the core, Jeremy, Jeremy, you're, you're probably asking, are Zach and Fatima in a toxic relationship? How toxic is the relationship? Well, let me just put it this way. Do I feel like Zach and Fatima have a toxic relationship? At first, no. But I think gradually it became a toxic relationship. But they are pulling through. How toxic are they? Now, at first, when I was looking through this list of 20 plus traits, I wanted to do like a tally mark of Zach is guilty of this. Fatima's guilty of this. They're both guilty of this. But I feel like that isn't the best way to gauge how toxic their relationship is. I feel like... um at the core and i feel like this is a generic answer but it's the truth how toxic are they they're as toxic as the writer <laughs> makes them to be or as the plot needs them to be i feel like if we scrap the entirety of sister season five in terms of the zatima drama these two we wouldn't even be having this conversation i feel like tyler just ruined the hell out of these characters I feel like season five was the downfall of Fatima, but she came back up in season six. It's funny how season seven is harkening back to sister season one, where I, re I really wasn't a Zach fan, but I grew to love the character. Season seven is going back to this, man, I do not like the Zach that we have now. I don't know what the writers are doing, but I do not like this Zach. 
he has those rare moments where it's like, okay, this is the Zach I know. Like when he brought flowers and framed uh, Fatima's acceptance letter into law school. But most of season seven, I was not feeling what they were doing from the disregarding of her feelings to, you know, playing in her face about the twins. It's just like, bro, come on, get, what are you doing? But can the relationship be fixed? Absolutely. These two have proven to make it through some pretty rough times, but uh, some different things to, you know, look at in terms of fixing the toxicity. Don't dwell on the past. I mean, I feel like that's one of the biggest things. And this comes from both parties. Zach needs to stop trying to feel like he has to earn Fatima. And by that, I mean, trying to overcompensate in his current relationship because of what he didn't do in his past relationship. Him wanting to be better, not just for Fatima, but be a better man in general is fantastic. But at the same time, don't uh, smother Fatima with just way too much stuff at once. Like, slow down. There's no rush to get married. There's no rush to move her in. I mean, well, we're kind of, you know, we kind of passed this. But given that this is a TV show and we don't know how long it's going to run, I, I understand why Tyler kind of pushed him into this, you know, house situation. But yeah, don't dwell on the past, Zach. Especially Fatima, don't project the past with Ian or any other former lovers onto Zach. Next up is therapy, which again, Zach is doing great at, but I feel like we all agree that they need couples therapy. I feel like Zach and Fatima would benefit from couples therapy. Um, Just reignite the compassion for each other. Notice I said, compassion, not passion. I feel like these two are still in love. They still feel a lot towards each other in a good way. But the compassion and understanding of communication and recognizing when one person isn't really, they're upset about something, that needs to be brought back to the forefront. Which they are, they were getting better at in season six, but season seven, yeah, they need to heal individually. Yeah, they don't always need to be up under each other. Like, you know, go hang out. Well, I don't want to say go hang out with your friends because... More often than not, those friends usually lead to more issues in the relationship. But yeah, they need to heal individually, which goes back to the therapy. We got Zach attending, but I think Fatima needs to go back herself. This is a big one, especially towards Fatima. Accountability. Recognize when you're wrong and apologize. I don't know why Fatima got to the point where she just stopped doing that. But in season six, where she blew up at Zach saying it was too much with the kid and whatnot and the twins, but she did come downstairs and explain how she felt. Hey, fully justified, but I'm glad that she acknowledged that, you know, she blew up on Zach. But at the same time, it's because he failed to acknowledge how she might feel about all this baggage going on. So they are getting back to this. Healthy communication. I don't need to hark on this a lot. I just talked about it a lot. Get back to telling each other how you feel. Um, and instead of blowing up on each other, talk to each other. Remember, not talk at, but talk to. Allow space and time for change. Like, not everything is going to be fixed overnight. It's going to take some time. And they'll adapt. I, I know they can make it. I know they can. Now, with that being said, I do want to kind of go back to the beginning of their relationship and ask you some questions because I feel like I, I've mentioned this before, but sometimes I really do feel like the writing has me thinking maybe they aren't in a good situation ship. <laughs> when you look at how these two got together, where they were both at, Zach was fresh out of a breakup from three years. Now, keep in mind, Karen kicked him to the curb during what, like the or the middle of season one. I mean, there were a couple of times where she's like, I want to get back together. Like, I think that she tried to get back together with him. But what was her name? Helena, the chick at the airport when Zach was staying at like the halfway house or whatever. And then they had sex. But then when she found out that Zach was going back to Karen, he, she made up the lie that she was pregnant and then Karen, you know, dumped him again before they even got back together. But yeah, I want to say for a majority of season one, these two weren't together, but Zach was constantly trying to get her back. But then when she chose Aaron, even after saving or, you know, after Zach saved her life, 
she still chose him. Zach was in a funk, went to the chain breakers meeting, met Fatima. We learned Fatima was a free agent. Basically, it's like, look, you know, guys get to date around and have a good time without connection or attachments. Why can't women do the same thing? And I remember like, no, no, Zach, run. Don't walk, run. So the argument could be made that was Fatima just Zach's rebound? Was she just Zach's rebound? I mean, she basically picked him off the street like a, you know, straight puppy, brought him home, cleaned him up, loved on him and helped him grow into the man he is today. But, and look, look, folks, I am in no way, shape or form hinting at Zach and Fatima not loving each other. But when you look at um, everything they've gone through, I feel like more people nowadays are saying that Fatima should leave Zach as opposed to staying with Zach. There's just way too much drama. If you took the good sex or the great amazing sex out of the equation, what do Zach and Fatima have that she couldn't gain from another relationship? Because, you know, what's the term? Dickmatized? I feel like that's a major factor. Like, Angela, let's go to Club Eden. No, Zach is bigger than the dudes in there. I'm like, what the? I mean, he must be packing or something. Or because Belinda, Karen, Connie, you got all these women from the past who are just, they, they can't get enough of that Zach good good, if you will. I feel like, you know, when uh, Zatima season two happened and Zach was in the club confronting Paul and Fatima, basically saying, oh, does he make you laugh the way I do? Does he know all these little idiosyncrasies about you that I do? And Fatima was like, you know, oh, he makes me laugh. We have good conversation. I ain't going to lie. I wasn't rooting for Paul because I hate home wreckers. And the fact that he went after Fatima after even though he knew she was engaged to someone, I feel like that's a trash move. But. Fatima, I mean, during their uh, outings, I don't even want to call them dates, but their outings together, she realized that, wow, I mean, it kind of reminded me of um, Preston when he started dating other black women. And he told Danny, he's like, I went out with this girl and that girl. And it's like, it's so easy with them. We can talk. I'm not being disrespected. I'm not being ridiculed. I'm not having to walk on. Oh, Lord, that would be a good video. Preston and Danny. Um. I'm not being ridiculed. Um, I'm not being, you know, just constantly downplayed. Basically, I'm able to have everything I want with you with them. So why am I still feeling, you know, in love with you? And I feel the same way about Zach and Fatima sometimes where Fatima is just stunned that, wait a minute, I can have a relationship without the disrespectful ex, the baby mama drama, the constant fear of my man getting locked up. And in some ways, she had more in common with Paul than she did with Zach. They were able to communicate on a deeper level because when you really look at it, Zach and Fatima, when they first hooked up, it was all about the sex, that shower sex and the, you know, the sex that messed up her hair so bad she had to go to the uh, salon to get it done by Karen. Basically, it's just those situations where they kind of speed ran their relationship. They kind of did it out of order. As a person who's waiting to have sex until marriage, I can't really speak from experience on the idea of, wow, me and this girl hooked up. And then after we started actually talking to each other, like a couple of days later, we found out we didn't have a lot in common, but dang, the sex was amazing. I feel like that was the main issue with Zach and Fatima. Like they really just hopscotched past the getting to know each other stage. And, you know, it's just a fact that Fatima has a thing for felons. Like, I don't mean to sound like hating, but hey, that's what it is. So if you took the good sex out of the equation, uh, what is there? What is there left? And I've said this uh, several times in the past that if Zach and Fatima broke up, that wouldn't necessarily be a bad thing. Here's what I mean by that. And I'm not rooting for them to break up, but here's what I'm saying. When you look at their positions in life when they met each other, Fatima was hurt. I mean, she was dating around, yeah, but that was more so a reaction to the fact that she was heartbroken by Ian. You know, their world, their whirlwind romance, you know, thinking she was deeply in, well, he loved her the same way she loved him. They were going to be together, but then the fact that he talked her into getting an abortion and then she he married someone else, that crushed her. So she just opted to be a man in terms of just dating to date. 
as opposed to getting anything meaningful. Zach taught her to break, you know, Zach fought through and broke the walls that she had built up due to her hurt from Ian. And he taught Fatima that she could love again. Fatima taught Zach that he is more than he thinks he is. Unlocking the potential that he had inside that, you know, was beaten out of him by the constant berating from women in his life, being his mom. What did he say? He was raised by his aunt or grandmother or something. So uh, just a woman, a uh, parental esque figure that would just constantly talk down to him. Uh, probably other relationships as well. Mm, let's not even get started on Karen, but she was able to break Zach out of that shell of depression and self-loathing to really come into the man that he is today. And from that, he was able to learn that, hey, I am able to be a provider. I am able to be loyal. I am able to be a good man. I am able to be loving. And, you know, I feel like even if they walked away from each other, it would suck. Because I remember as a kid watching The Wonder Years. And it wasn't until I was in like middle school when I would catch reruns on, I forgot what channel, but it was like late at night. And I remember watching the final episode, I'm like, Winnie and Kevin didn't get together. What kind of bullshit? And I remember feeling that way. And not every couple has a happy ending. I mean, I mean, like, you know, your high school romances, those don't always last. But even as adults, sometimes people, it's like Medea said, people in your life are sometimes like the parts of a tree. Some people are there for a lifetime, the roots, others are like leaves or some certain branches that are only there for a little bit, then they eventually just fall off and wither away. But sometimes you have to um, keep in mind, some people come into your life for a season, for a reason to teach you a lesson and then they move on. But then you fall in love and then you keep those people who were only supposed to be there for a small amount of time and then you wind up unhappy. In some ways, I feel like that's what Zach and Fatima are to each other based on how they're written, depending on the plot. There are times where I'm like, I feel like these two should have moved on from each other. But guess what? Their pairing is so popular <laughs> that they're going to stay together no matter what. Unless there's a major epilogue and then they just time skip and it reveals they got a divorce, some shit like that. But I do feel like at some points of their relationships, I feel like they should have ended it. But Zach just... But he just felt like I found a good one. I need to lock her down, which again, when you and looks aside, Fatima is a good chick or no, I'm sorry, a great woman. But I think that Zach, after being whipped and abused by Karen for so long, any woman that would have come into his life, any woman that would have hit his ass on that bicycle and given him a little bit of confidence and some kindness and some sex would have been in Fatima's position. That's what I think, which is sad, though. It, it's sad. Um, but, hey, they do say, like, sometimes you just know. When you know, you know. When you get married or something like that, uh, you just know when you found the one. But I do feel like, in some ways, these two should have called it quits a while ago because they it, it would hurt the breakup, but they'll be a lot stronger as a result because I feel like Zach and Fatima are better now than how they were prior to entering each other's lives because they did they had that much of an impact on each other whether they know it or not please say you'll be my wife yes we're just arguing that just means we're ready for marriage i'm real you real Team was real. Here you go. Yeah, I did not like them getting engaged in season one as a team. I did not like it whatsoever. I mean, from Fatima inviting Ian downstairs to talk, it was just such a messed up scenario. The fact that it felt like Zach only did it. I feel like that's another thing. Zach always has to pull out these gestures whenever he wants to get Fatima to get on her good side again. Whenever he screws up or whenever she's mad, here's a car here. Move in with me. Let's get married. I'm like, what's next? Like buying her a law firm or something. Wait, didn't he say he would do that after congratulating her going on getting accepted into law school? But whatever. Um, I feel like uh, currently, and I've said this unpopular opinion. I remember it was an unpopular opinion when they first got engaged. I 
don't like that they got engaged. I feel like it was just done for ratings <clears throat> because originally season one was supposed to be the only season. And then you got the inconsistencies of the timeline stuff, which I'm not even going to get into in this video, but eventually it was brought into sisters that they're engaged. I don't think they need to be married anytime soon. Yeah, yes, you can have long engagements. You can, you can. But I don't feel like Zach and Fatima are in a place now where they need to get married. And Lord, I do not want them to have a kid together right now. I know that, but she's pregnant. Well, she said she was pregnant at the end of season two that has yet to be addressed in Sisters. We need to wait until season three to see when and if it's addressed. Like I said in another video recently, they could just pull a dream sequence and just say, oh, Fatima just dreamed that she was pregnant. That whole scene at the end of the season two was just a dream. It's like the scenario of them watching the videotapes was real, but the segment about her being pregnant was not. Maybe Zach was in his mind. I don't know. But I'm not even going to bring that up. I just don't feel like it's a good scenario with Nick Can. I mean, um, not Nick Cannon, but Zach having all these baby mamas. It's just no, 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 no. And like I said uh, earlier, there are more reasons why. I mean, if you had like a, you know, a dry eraser board or a chalkboard or whatever and just took a tally mark and just weighed your options or made a list on a piece of paper. Zach and Fatima have far more reasons to end their relationship than stay together. And Fatima did say this one particular line. Um, I don't remember the exact episode, but it was towards the end of season six when um, Andy was trying to play hard to get with Jordan. Uh, this was prior to her, Sabrina and Danny going over to his house. And then the whole Gary Penelope thing blew up. And basically Fatima said this. That was all before me. Yeah, but it's still drama. Yeah, it's um, it's drama that I'm willing to walk through with Zach. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I mean, as crazy as, as it sounds, I would go through hell with him. I'd rather do that than be lonely and by myself. Yeah, that line didn't sit too well with me. It just, look. Yeah, you can love someone through some hard times, but to make it sound like you would put up with just about anything just because it's better than being lonely, I don't agree with whatsoever. It just felt like a line to showcase, oh, you know, yeah, I'm doing a lot of crap with Zach and all of his baggage and we have our issues, but it's better than being lonely. I don't know. Maybe when you hit a certain age, you feel that way, but I'm 32, so I don't know. Maybe it hasn't hit just yet, but... I just, like Medea said in that one play, I'd rather be in a corner alone with a goldfish and a little puppy and be happy than um, in a house with a man and I'm wondering what the hell he's he's doing here. So I don't know. I just feel like, yeah, that's a, nah, Fatima. I, I got to disagree with you there. But can they pull through it all similar to how toxic are they? It depends on the writer. Or in this case, the writers, because... Uh, Tyler handed the reins to the show to other a writing team. And I think Zatima season three was also written by Tyler Perry, but I don't know what the future holds for that show. If there's a season four, they'll have a different writing team or what. But I think that Zach and Fatima can pull through, but should they though? Like I said, it's up to you. If you feel Zach and Fatima should stay together and continue some of their toxic tendencies because at the end of the day no relationship is perfect no relationship is toxic free there are some elements that seep through like sometimes you catch your partner in a bad mood other times you know the past rears its ugly head and you have to deal with it but you know i don't think that zach and fatima have a you know hazardous toxic relationship like crystal said you know Toxic love has become a bit of a common factor in today's world, which is kind of sad because we live in a digital age where sex and hookups is more common and more favorable than long lasting relationships. And the options are just everywhere from, you know, just the palm of your hand. You can open up an app and you could see so many things it's like, oh, you know, I could hook up with this chick or, oh, this guy looks fine. Let me go over to his place or, oh, this person wants to fly me out. The attachment to just one person is just not 
not really glorified. It's more so what can I get right now? And then once, you know, you run your course having hot girl summers and whatnot, or, you know, guys racking up a body count, then all of a sudden when they get older, it's like, oh, well, you know, maybe I want to settle down now. No, it's like toxic love is unfortunately the norm, but that doesn't mean genuine love isn't out there somewhere. Zach and Fatima are a, sadly, kind of the Will and Jada of the black TV, you know, circuit where back in the day, it's like, oh man, these two were relationship goals. Yeah, give me that Will and Jada love. Give me that Zach and Fatima love. But years later, it's like, eh, I don't know about that. It's like, no, nah, I'm good. It's like, I don't want to deal with that. It's like, all that glitters certainly isn't golden. But I think that, um, the realistic element is what makes Zach and Fatima great. I've said it time and time again. They don't have to have a perfect love because nobody does. It makes it more realistic. But at the same time, it's like even I had to go, damn, Tyler, come on. Well, can you can you uh, soften the blow? Like we don't need this much drama in a relationship. What happened to the happy times? Because like I said before, the moments where Zach and Fatima would come on screen for just a couple of minutes would make an episode shine, even if it was boring as hell. But then it got to the point where the more screen time they got, the more drama they got. And it's like the constant bickering was just so exhausting. It's like, wait, are we seeing Zach and Karen all over again? Because I remember getting flack in season five prior to Zach calling Fatima Karen by mistake. I said, I don't know, man. Uh, Fatima's, she's acting like Karen, you know, disregarding Zach's feelings, never listening to him. And in season five, some of the issue, look, Zach has his baggage. He has his problems. But more often than not, Fatima would be the one to initiate an issue and then blame Zach for it. Zach is like, hey, don't answer that phone. It's, it, it must be Karen. It must be Pam. They just want to start some shit. And then Fatima's like, no, no, no. We need to see what's going on. And then when she... Uh, answers the phone and gets cussed out all of a sudden she gets mad at Zach and it's like look I mean he tried to tell your ass or uh, hey Zach I trust you goes talk to Karen all right I'm going to see Karen because you told me to and then when a photo or something gets leaked what the hell did you do I didn't do nothing but yeah like I said I hope this video demonstrates that both parties are guilty of toxic behavior it's not just Zach it's not just Fatima it's the both of them screwing up from time to time. Now, I think some elements that could help their relationship, dump the friends. I mean, Angela has kind of come around. Tony has never been like a huge negative poster boy of anti-Zatima, you know, propaganda. That's more Nathan. But I think that they let outside sources, whether it be the sister circles or the friend group, dictate some of their reactions. I mean... It's like, I think Kevin Hart said this on a, uh, The Breakfast Club. I think even DeVal said this on The Breakfast Club uh, when he and Kadeem were on there. I think that social media and the internet, they it blo when you have a relationship issue that's brought to the public, it usually gets blown out of proportion because you and your wife, your partner, your husband, whoever, y'all can discuss that behind closed doors and take care of it and it's done. But when you get online and you see it's a trending topic or you see these uh, different channels and blogs doing videos and post about it, you, you, you invite that into the relationship when you allow the general public's opinion to influence how you react or ha how you handle certain situations. So sometimes that causes more of a expansion of the issue when it should have been something that was kept close to home or handled behind closed doors. So a lot, like for example, Fatima, instead of talking to her man, became a person who goes around talking to Andy or talking to Angela or sometimes Danny, as opposed to talking to Zach. And as a result, it's like, you'll blow up at Zach, have those calm, rational discussions with another woman. But then when you come back to Zach, you act like you didn't do anything wrong. But Zach, on the other hand, you know, like, bro, I, I, I will never forgive you. Like, who in their right mind would cheer in his fiance's face? Yo, my ex is pregnant with twins. Oh, double barrel. Bang, bang. Bro, read the room before you end up in a hospital bed. You're already in the hospital. So I'm just sitting there like, come on, man. Come on. And in terms of like setting boundaries, like Zach hasn't checked Karen, but there's that. So yeah, there are definitely a lot of factors I can go into. I don't even know how long this video is because I recorded it in different segments, but it could be around an hour or so. Like I said, there's so much I wish I could have put in the video, but I didn't want to be up here for like five hours. But 
it was good to go back down memory lane and explore the early stages of Zack and Fatima's relationship. The chemistry was awesome. And it wasn't even about the sex scenes. A lot of people are like, oh, they don't really have a lot of sex, you know, nowadays compared to the first scenes they would have because of this. this. No, 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 no. It's, yeah, the chemistry was there. The sex te- scenes were like the icing on the cake. But just seeing Zack happy, seeing Fatima being able to love Again, when they would have their issues and would come back together, it felt real. But, um, yeah, that that's pretty much it. They have toxic tendencies in their relationship. Some of their <sighs> issues are handled in a negative way. But I think that Zach and Fatima, they're an interesting pairing. They're popular for a reason. And regardless of what I think, they're fan favorites. I mean, like I said, honestly, I feel like they should break up for multiple reasons, but I don't think they will, at least not long term. You know, I mean, Batman never kills the Joker because he's a cash cow. It's like, you know, um, when it comes to Zack and Fatima, they're not going to break up permanently. I mean, hell, Zack and Kelly on Saved by the Bell broke up plenty of time. I feel like some a lot of these toxic couples, you know, like Maxine and Kyle, they were together once or twice and living single before they broke it off when Kyle went to London and then he came back in the end of the series and they were together. Uh, then you have Martin and Gina. They had like a, what was it? A three part episode, uh, breaking up is hard to do, but then they got back together. Then they got married, but then, you know, the behind the scenes stuff between Tisha and Martin ruined season five, but you know, that's neither here nor there. But in any case, what do you think? Do you think Zach and Fatima have a toxic relationship? Let me know in the comments below. Let me know if you like the video. I know, like I said, this was a long form video outside of live streams. I haven't done like an hour video in a while. I think this is an hour. I, I'm pretty confident this will turn out to be like an hour long. Um, if there's anybody listening from the sisters or Zatima cast or anyone who works at Viacom or Tyler Perry Studios, help a brother out. Share this video around. Let's get, get get it some traction. And like I said, if this video is received well, even if you don't agree with me, but if it's received well in terms of a lot of views, uh, 3,000 plus likes, this will entice me to do another long form video. It could be about Zach and Karen. It could be about Danny and Preston. Uh, given the fact that the show is gone for another two months, I... Yeah, I don't have a lot of content to do, which is fine. I know I could easily go to the BET Plus catalog and look at different shows, but mentally it's been good to have a break, you know, especially with the fact that uh, within the next few weeks, Lord willing, the house is going to be ready and I'll be in the process of moving. So by the time Sisters comes back for season 7B, I'll be in my new home in a office space. Uh, a room dedicated to being an office where I can do my content in a more professional manner. But yeah, I, I enjoyed doing the work on this video. Zach and Fatima are popular for a reason. Crystal and Deval, the, the chemistry and the work that they put into making these characters come to life is stellar. Uh, the relationship has ups and downs, but hey, what relationship doesn't? So with that being said, thanks so much for tuning in. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Anything I might have missed of, oh, Jeremy, here's another example of a toxic, you know, um, situation in their relationship. Or, hey, Jeremy, here's uh, some highlights where even though they don't have the squeaky clean honeymoon-esque relationship they had at the beginning, here are moments within the past season or two that demonstrate that they still love each other very much. And I am very curious to see if Zatima season three will add to the toxicity or lessen it, showing that they really do love each other more than the, you know, things that they go through. So like and subscribe and I will catch you in the next video.